السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers, my sisters You know that when you would like to start something big You need to prepare for it When there is a major event about to happen It's important to prepare for it we have the month of Ramadan in about two weeks time, just over two weeks, if I'm not mistaken. And subhanallah, it would be wrong for us not to prepare for this beautiful month. If I were to ask you, this month is about what? You will tell me it's about fasting. So people begin to prepare for Ramadan by packing away a lot of foodstuffs. The opposite. I mentioned a few days ago that the month where we are supposed to be staying away from food and drink during daylight hours, if a person who didn't know more than that had to watch the Muslim homes just before Ramadan, they would be shocked to find that they are stockpiling before the month of Ramadan. You're filling your freezers. You're stocking up on all the food and all the savouries and all the pies and whatnot before the month of Ramadan, but that's the month when you're not supposed to be eating. Surely it should be the other way around where we don't need to stock on anything because we're not going to be eating for a whole month from dawn to dusk. But subhanallah, we prepare for the food for the month where we are supposed to be fasting, but we forget that it is the month of forgiveness. It is a month in which there is a night more powerful than a thousand months. Laylatul Qadri Khairun Min Alf Shah. The night of Qadr, the night of decree, the night of power is better than a thousand months, 80 something years. So before we get into Ramadan, my brothers, my sisters, one of the first things you should do to seek the forgiveness of Allah so that you start Ramadan with a clean slate. One might think, well, Ramadan is the month of forgiveness. Why should I start it with a clean slate? Let me get into it and then I'll clean my slate, right? But you don't know if you're going to witness the month of Ramadan. We have seen healthy people suddenly drop. We have seen wealthy people suddenly leave and depart. We have buried people who didn't imagine they were going to die. Suddenly, a few days later, they were gone. We saw it happening within the last two years more than in the other times in our lives because of the pandemic. May Allah protect us from all pandemics. My brothers, my sisters, just bear in mind at the back of your mind that it could be that this might be my last day on earth. If I were to tell you that now, you understand it better than you would if I told you the same thing two years back. No one knows how long they're going to live for, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a recurring gift that comes back every year. It's as though Allah knows that the battery needs to be recharged once a year in this particular month. And so we reconnect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What battery needs to be recharged? Allah says, we have prescribed fasting upon you. We have made it compulsory for you like we did upon those before you. The nature of the fast might be slightly different with the previous umam and the previous nations, but it is still fasting for the sake of Allah, abstention for the sake of Allah, discipline for the sake of Allah. When Allah says, stop eating, you stop. And that's why it's always good to have suhoor. Suhoor is the pre-fast meal, early morning. You have something because when the time clocks in, it's very good to abstain at that moment when Allah says stop eating and you're about to put something and you don't, subhanAllah. Or you've just had the last morsel and you say the time is up. I'm not going to be having this and this because the time is up. 
That is great obedience of Allah. When Allah said, don't do, you stopped it instantly. Similarly, when Allah said, now eat, it is detested to delay the opening of the fast. If this is the time, try and open at that time. Put something in your mouth because Allah says eat. You know, it is detested. If you were to say, okay, the fast ends perhaps at whatever time, perhaps at the moment it's approximately 6 something, 6.15 or so. If it were to end at 6.15 and you say, it's okay, I'll just open my fast at 7.15. What happens? That's not a fast. You've decided when to open it when Allah says, I will decide when it will be open. So you have to have that to obey Allah in abstention as well as in fulfillment of an instruction. That is the complete obedience of Allah. When you have a mathematics exam, they don't only test you multiplication and addition. They ask you, okay, now subtract this as well. Let's see. Do you know subtraction and division? If the answer is yes, then you're um, you're better, you may pass your exam, but if you only know how to add and multiply and you don't know how to subtract, it's not complete. The same applies in Islam. Allah asks you to do certain things so you know I've got to do. And then Allah says, okay, I've made certain things that I don't want you to do. There are certain things in front of you, you're not allowed to eat them. Some things are haram, najisul ain. Some things are considered impure, impermissible. You're not allowed to go near them or to consume them or to make money out of them. Are you going to abstain? And then people say, but why did Allah create it in the first place? If he really didn't want you to partake in intoxicants, why did he make it? Well, he needed to teach, he needed to test you the subtraction also, the division also to say, we're going to make this. I remember a young boy came to me and told me in one of the schools, he said, why did Allah create a pig if it was haram to eat? And I said, well, because it's a creature of Allah. In order to test you, are you going to eat or not eat? When Allah said, don't eat. And everyone says, oh, have you had some ham? Have you had some bacon? They say, Allah has prohibited it and I'm not going to have it. I haven't had it. And inshallah, that's how it will be. That's a beautiful response. With a... Other people are doing it or not, be they, you know, those of other faiths, etc. It's that's their, their business. But for us as believers, as Muslimin, we know Allah made something. We will be respectful towards the animal because it doesn't mean that you start harming the animal, but we don't consume it. That's it. We don't eat it. So Allah is testing us this month of Ramadan is a month of forgiveness. We start now saying, Oh Allah, forgive our shortcomings. Oh Allah, help us, guide us. We start planning to do things. Oh Allah, I'm starting now to read a verse a day from the Quran, two verses a day from the Quran. I want to attend the lessons that are going to be happening here in the East London Masjid. They are beautiful lessons. I'm going to attend them in Ramadan. I'm going to make sure that I participate. I want to expand my knowledge. And subhanallah, if you happen to die before Ramadan, Allah will give you the full reward of having attended the lessons that you just planned to attend. Why? A person will be given the reward of what he has intended and all actions are judged by the underlying intentions. So Allah Almighty has given us a gift. What is the gift? The gift is when I plan to do something good, I'm rewarded for the planning. So let's start planning. My brothers, my sisters, Taraweeh is going to take place in Ramadan. Where am I going to be? What is the timing? How's my work placed? How is my travel going to be? Where am I going to open the fast? What's going to be happening, inshallah, in the weekends? What do I want to do? Will I have the opportunity to listen to a beautiful, melodious recitation in a masjid where I'm going to enjoy every moment of it as an act of worship? Why do I say an act of worship? Because sometimes we're guilty of fulfilling salah as though it is a race and not an act of worship. That's it happens. So we select a place where they're done. 10 minutes. 
And we actually tell our friends, let's go to that masjid. Why? Because we can sit outside and smoke later. You know, they finish in 10 minutes. Oh, you're planning that. Is that what it is? That's wrong planning. You'd rather say, guys, you know what? We're quitting smoking. It's a bad habit. We're quitting shisha. It's a bad habit. And I know they're all around this area. But it is. To say the least. We're just saying the least. We're going to quit this bad habit. It's a bad habit. I'm going to give this thing up. It's a bad habit. Start from now. So quitting of bad habits. Don't say I'm going to do that in Ramadan. Just in Ramadan I'm going to quit smoking. No. A bad habit must be given up from now but something you want to do in ramadan that's going to happen in ramadan you can plan for all of that all of that like i said taraweeh doesn't happen now it will happen in ramadan the fasting you can start voluntary fasting from now it's a sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam do you know the benefits of fasting on a monday and a thursday try it out your life will change fasting on the 13th 14th 15th of the lunar calendar try it out your life will change Rewards are multiplied by 10. So if you fast those three days every month, it's as good as fasting 30 days because it's multiplied by 10. And if you fast the two days every week, subhanAllah, imagine how much reward you are attaining by the time you've completed the year. It's as though you fasted the whole year. But guess what? It was only by virtue of reward. That's Allah's gift. Another thing. Sometimes we are food lovers. What's a food lover? Back in South Africa, there is a store called Food Lovers Paradise. And I think to myself, subhanAllah, we should have a sign on the masjid saying, Allah lovers paradise. Right? You love Allah, come to the house of Allah. Spend time here. Rajulun qalbuhu mu'allakum bil masajidi. One of the VIPs of the Day of Judgment is a person whose heart is connected to the house of Allah. You are connected to Allah, his house. You love it. You come, you spend time, you, you spend a moment and you're always an asset to the people around and to the environment. You help clean up maybe, you will contribute towards, you want to fulfill salah and you're not a pain because some people come to the house of Allah just to create issues. This issue and that issue and you make, you know, you cause a problem, you make litter or whatever else it may be. That's not how it should be. We are people who should be coming and cleaning up. If there is a small, you know, piece of cloth or a little piece of a string or any dirt that's around us, we pick it up, put it in your own pocket rather than litter the masjid and take it out. Why? That's the house of Allah. I cleaned it. Allah will help you clean your life, my brother. Allah will clean your act for you. Allah will, you have a love for the house of Allah. You are bothered about the place and you look at everything. You make people feel comfortable here. Allah will make you feel comfortable everywhere else. Let's remember, Allah doesn't need us. We need Allah. So Allah's watching us. He put an instruction and he says, what are you going to do? Pray five times a day for me, but not for my benefit. How's that? You see that? Pray five times a day for me, but the benefit is actually yours. Fast in the month of Ramadan for me. But the benefit is yours. Be How do I know the benefit is his even if he didn't tell me? Because if I didn't fast, it doesn't even affect him. Subhanallah. If the whole world had to transgress against Allah, it doesn't deplete anything from Allah's kingdom. It doesn't decrease his value, even an iota. And if all of us had to obey Allah, may Allah make us from among those, it doesn't increase the value of Allah, it increases our value. We become closer to Allah. So develop a connection with the masjid. That's a VIP on the day of judgment. You have preparation by visiting the masjid a little bit more. Come for one more salah. How many ever salahs you are coming for already to the masjid? Add one more. Make an effort. Your life will change. Do you know what Allah does for you? He will protect you from committing other sins. By virtue of your concern to worship him. Did you hear what I just said? If you are going to make it your business to fulfill salah, to be connected to the masjid, to come to the masjid for as many prayers as you can. And I'm speaking here about people who are living in a cosmopolitan society in the first world where it may not be so easy to go to the masjid all the time because of where we might be working and what might be the scenario and situation. But make an effort, do your best. And guess what? 
do you really think you're going to commit adultery when you know that Salat al-Dhuhr is just now and I'm always at the masjid and I've planned to go to the masjid and I've just made wudu. What happens? Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. Salah itself will stop you and prohibit you from immorality and sin, evil. Because you're always concerned. I'm in wudu, I made wudu, I've held my wudu because I need to fulfill my prayer. What's going to happen? Allah will protect you. You came to the masjid, Allah will save you as a result of that. You looked after others, you helped them, you made people feel comfortable in the house of Allah. When you look at others, don't just, you know, push them. Some people, they stand in prayer and they push the other guy and then they push this guy here. And then they push him a little bit more and push the other guy this way. Here. Relax, it's not a TikTok video, by the way. It's actually a house of Allah, make people feel comfortable. Yes, you should stand together, shoulder to shoulder. But it must be comfortable. It must be beautiful. Don't mess the life for the others. What's the big deal if a window or two happen to be open for ventilation? If you're feeling a little bit cold, perhaps you can move rather than closing the window for others who might feel a little bit hot. Don't be a nuisance in the house of Allah and then see what happens in your own home. Allah will save you from disaster. He'll help you solve your problems. He'll make you love one another in the house. Why? Because you make sure that in the house of Allah, I spread the love. Greet the brothers. Greet the people around you. The sisters. I don't mean the brothers greet the sisters. But what I mean is amongst yourselves, you greet each other. People sometimes are so arrogant, so stuck up, literally, in the house of Allah. What's the point? Clean your heart. Greet the people. No matter what color, shape, size, race, whatever it may be. Make sure you realize and understand. Kulluna min Adama wa Adama min Turab. We're all from Adam. And Adam is from the dust. He's from the soil. You will only be successful when you respect those around you. When you realize I'm just one. Even though you might be wealthier than a lot of the others. What's the big deal? What's the big deal? When it's your last breath, it's your last breath. You cannot tell Malakul Maut, hey, I've got 300 grand in my bank account. Can you say that? Big deal. Subhanallah, Malakul Maut is not interested in anything. If anything, people will fight over the money that you've left behind and maybe your own children might be at war with each other for decades to come as a result of, I'd rather not have had that. See the point? So don't allow arrogance to creep in your heart in the midst of a good deed. People say, I'm fasting, I go for taraweeh, I go for a good, to a good masjid, I do this, I do that. These guys are useless, they don't do any of that. Hang on. You see what shaitan made you do? He made you feel and think that no, what I'm doing is so valuable. These other guys, their value is zero. Automatically, you got pride. Pride was the main disease of Iblis, Kibr. He had pride. What was Kibr? That pride was the feeling that I am better. The Quran mentions it. What did Iblis say? Straight. I'm sure you understood that, most of you, right? He says, I am better than, than him. Why should I offer respect to Adam when I'm better than him? We do that sometimes when we feel we are pious and then we belittle others. MashaAllah, if Allah gave you the opportunity to fulfill five salah in the masjid, to dress appropriately, to read Quran, to understand the Quran, to attend the lessons, to be able to fast in a proper way, to be able to worship him in a beautiful way, that should humble you. You must thank Allah for that. Thank Allah, but don't display it to the others to say, what do you guys do? Nothing. Look at what I do. Maybe we might not say it with our tongues, but if you feel it within you, you don't understand. Every football match is judged by the score when the whistle is blown, not before that. You can be as excited as you want for Liverpool to be winning 5 naught. You can be excited as you want if, subhanallah, if the win is not written for them, the other team, by the time the whistle is blown, may win 6-5. Is it not possible? I see the Manchester supporters all said, yes. <laughs> Allah grant us ease. My brothers, my sisters, if your life 
has taken you to the wrong place so far, it's not too late. You're alive, you're breathing. And guess what? We're talking about turning to Allah. Let's ask Allah here and now. Oh Allah, forgive our shortcomings. Oh Allah, grant us strength to leave sin. Allahumma kfini bi halalika an haramika wa ghnini bi fadlika amman siwak. Oh Allah, grant me sufficiency in halal so that I don't go into haram. And oh Allah, grant me independence through your virtue and sustenance so that I don't depend on anyone besides you. What a powerful dua. Make the dua. Oh Allah, halal, let it be beautified for me. Let me be content with halal so that I never go into haram. Protect me from haram. Strengthen me. Oh Allah, create a barrier every time I plan to sin. Create a miraculous barrier that I just don't sin. Sometimes you plan to do something wrong and then something happens and you couldn't make it. That was Allah, his gift for you. He didn't want you to do it. It wasn't worth it. That's why when a mu'min falls into sin, he feels within himself, you know what? I shouldn't have done this. It's a good sign. I shouldn't have done this. But if someone has no belief at all, they can sin once and twice. For them, it's not even a sin. What are you calling that a sin? We don't even believe it's a sin. Why? Because they're not believers at all. It's their life. But for us as believers... What's the sign that you're conscious of Allah? A sign that you're conscious of Allah is your regret when you do the wrong thing and your happiness when he accepts you to do the right thing. I always believe and it is a fact. It is taught to us by Allah and it is taught to us by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah is in absolute control of everything, including your hearts. That's why every day we ask Allah, in prayer, in Surah Al-Fatiha, Oh Allah, guide us to the straight path. No matter how rightly guided you think you are, you have to still make that dua. Have you thought of it? I'm a Muslim, I pray, I do good, I've done this, I do my Quran, I dress appropriately, I don't do haram, I'm what, I'm what. You still have to continue to say, Because your whistle is not blown. What that means is the end has not come. You don't know where you're going to go. You don't know by the time your life ends where you're going to be. So you have to keep saying, oh Allah, guide us to the straight path. Guidance is the most important thing ever. But even beyond that, the understanding that your heart is in the hands of Allah. The Prophet wasallam used to say, Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qulubana ala deenik. Oh you, oh Allah who is the controller and the mover of the hearts, turn our hearts towards the deen, towards faith, towards goodness, towards piety. Turn it away from sin, in other words. So who is the turner of the heart? It's Allah. For you and I to be gathered in the house of Allah is one of the biggest gifts that we could be blessed with. You could be doing something else right now, so could I. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. He has accepted us to come to his place. I always say, you won't go to someone's place if you're not close to them. So if you've come to the house of Allah and you feel comfy here, I feel good, I feel nice, especially ELM, mashallah, nice place, you know. We've got a lot of space, we've got, mashallah, good facilities. May Allah accept it from those who made it happen. And may Allah continue to use such beautiful places to serve and spread the good cause. If you came and you feel good and comfortable, it's a sign of your closeness to Allah. And it's also a sign of the goodness of those around you. Why would you come to the house of Allah? For what? Why are you here today? Why would you come? You want to pray? You want to remember Allah? You want to perhaps listen to a good word? You could have been here without even knowing there's going to be a dars or a lesson. And you came and you sat. Why did you sit? Because you felt... I just want to be moved a little bit. So move yourself in the right direction. We are sitting here because we wanted to hear something that would move us. How can we leave without being moved in the right direction? Is your life going to change a fraction? If it changes even a millimeter, you are successful. The trip was worth it. No matter what it costed you, it was worth it. Let's be upright. Let's thank Allah. Allah brought us to his house, no matter who we are. So the others around you are also the guests of whom? Of Allah. Those around you are the guests of Allah. 
They've come to the house of Allah. I said earlier, greet them. Perhaps a little smile, a good expression in the face. You don't look at someone, look down like, like, what are you doing here? I mean, what are you doing here? Basically, subhanallah. That might only happen in haram places. Where you ask a guy, what are you doing here? This is the same thing you're doing here. <laughs> may, may, may Allah Almighty forgive us. Amen. You don't make someone feel uncomfortable, no matter what. A, a, a person might come here with a hairstyle that is something, let's not use the word absurd. Let's say something different, subhanallah. Right? Something unique, okay? Totally, we haven't seen it. I'm trying to respect the dudes. Someone might think I'm... You know, talking about someone in particular? No, I'm just giving an example. Someone might come in with something, subhanallah, that you may not have expected to have seen in the house of Allah. Do not ridicule them. If the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam didn't ridicule a person who came and peed in the masjid, but corrected him and slowly told him things and answered his questions and engaged him. I mean, that's not peeing in the masjid. Something brought him here to the house of Allah. Don't chase him away. You might want to, subhanallah, if they inappropriately dressed for the house of Allah, you may want to beautifully say, guess what, guys? I have a cloak. Would you like to have this? Mashallah. Is it difficult to take it out? It might cost a fortune, but no problem. <laughs> That's okay. You can give it. No problem. Cover the brother. Cover the sister, for example, in an appropriate, respectful way, without making them feel you're unwelcome here. And see how Allah welcomes you into the hereafter. If a good deed to a dog got a man forgiveness and paradise, do you think a good deed to a human being will get you any less? Allahu Akbar. Did you hear that? If a bad deed to a cat or a kitten got that person punished, do you think a bad deed to a human being will save you? Do you think it's going to go unnoticed by Allah? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So be careful. Don't mess your life. Don't mess your deeds. Ramadan is a month of purity. To purify, to cleanse your heart. Start cleaning it from now. Why am I jealous of people who are doing better than me? Allah has given me. Allah has provided for me. I'm in my lane. Allah has given me food. Earlier this evening, I was speaking to someone who was saying, I'm so, so suicidal. And I said, but why? Do you know what the reason was? Because people have more than me. <laughs> Basically, that's what was being said. I have less. I don't really have a proper job. I don't really, I'm struggling for years doing this and doing that. You know, I have this constant health matter. I have what? And I said, do you know what? Don't judge based on what others have. Look at what you do have. You know, there is a verse of the Quran where Allah says, Today, I want to say something about this verse that you may not have heard before. The meaning, the simple meaning of it is, if you were to try and count the favors of Allah upon you, you won't be able to count them all. That's the simple meaning of the verse. Right? But if you were to count, now I'm raising the other side of it. If you were to count what Allah did not give you, you can count those. Because it's just limited. Allahu Akbar. Did you think of that? If Allah's telling you, when I favored you, you won't even realize the favor. How many of you consider the breathing from your nose as a favor of Allah until it's taken away? We didn't even count that. How many of you consider the ability to see without having a switch on the side to, to tune your eyes to look in focus as a gift of Allah? And one of the biggest gifts, the hearing, the sight, the breathing, the mouth, the ability to eat, the tongue, the hair, by the way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. All these are gifts of Allah. If you try to count the gifts of Allah, you won't manage. But if you count what Allah didn't give you, did not give you, you will be able to count. Why? Because there are a few things. What don't you have? I don't have this, 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 this. If I ask you, brother, what don't you have? You'll, you'll tell me five or ten things. That's it. Anything else? Say no, that's about it. Look at the favors of Allah. Allah says, we've given you way beyond what we haven't given you. 
But man, do you know why he becomes that way in negativity? He concentrates on the 10 things Allah didn't give him or her, and he forgets about the billions of things that he's got as a gift of Allah, favor of Allah. And I tell you something, every time you think you're going through a problem, there are people not too far from you who are going through a bigger problem, but they are probably just a little bit more easygoing than you because they have managed it and coped with it by the help of Allah. So if you turn to Allah, he will make your negativity simple for you. It becomes a positive. If you lost a job or you suffered in your health or for example, you suffered in your family or you lost a loved one or you have a major issue this way, that way. If that particular negative item brought you closer to Allah, wallahi, it was a gift of Allah. If at a point you were sinning and you were sinning and you were sinning and you didn't even have Allah in your equation because you were young and bubbling, bursting with energies, who is going to stop me? And you kept on sinning and sinning until one day something happened and it had to come to an abrupt stop and you stopped sinning. And then there came a time when you shed a tear to Allah and you said, oh Allah, help me. Imagine you haven't yet asked forgiveness of Allah, but because your life has come or has turned upside down, you're asking Allah to turn it the right way round again. Was that not Allah's favor upon you that you stopped the sin at least? Should you not seek the forgiveness of Allah, clear the slate? It's not difficult, my brothers, my sisters, to clean your slate here and now. No matter what you've done on earth, you can clean the slate here and now by the will of Allah. The only problem is when you have taken from the rights of a fellow human being, you're going to have to make peace with them. You're going to have to go and sort the matter out. You can't say, oh, wow, I just stole a million quid from this guy and I can clean my slate here and now. That's what I was told. No, you must go and return the money. Or if that person is generous enough and you tell them, listen, bro, I pinched a million from you. He said, nah, it's okay, minor, it's okay. So you're forgiven. <laughs> Whoa, subhanallah. I don't think that would happen even if he's a trillionaire. He'd say, hey, hey, you pay back every penny. And then you, you think to yourself, why did I even tell him? He didn't even know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness. The point I'm raising is between you and Allah, you clear the slate here and now. Oh Allah, forgive us. We don't want to sin. We won't sin. We regret what we've done. We will not do it again. We seek your forgiveness. Help us through the path. Make us strong. There is no point in sinning. Do you know, you feel like a fool when you grow a little bit older and you start looking back and thinking, when I had my energies, you know, I just wasted them in all nonsense. And for that reason, the same hadith I spoke about that mentions a person whose heart is hanging in the masjid or connected to the masjid makes mention of another person, Shabun. A young person, male or female, who grew up in that youth and the young age, you know, the teenage and slightly beyond in the obedience of Allah. In the obedience of Allah, when you're young and you want to be a little bit outrageous, mostly to be noticed, to be noticed, to be this way, that way. Allah says, you calm down, calm down. Whatever you do, don't do the wrong thing. The best gift that you could give yourself at that point is to have good friends, a lovely circle. When you have a beautiful circle around you, automatically you'll be doing the right thing. You won't be doing the wrong thing. Imagine you're cruising with your friends. Time for salah. They want to pray. You're not so keen. What will happen? Because of the virtue of the people around you, you end up praying. I had good guys with me. But if you're a person who prays, and then you're cruising with people who don't pray, and there are a lot of them. What will happen? Shaitan might come to you and make you feel embarrassed of worshipping your Lord. Subhanallah. So you're quiet about it. You haven't mentioned prayer, and you're just okay with it. And you, the time passed, and what happened? You didn't pray. Why? Because all your friends didn't pray either. So my brothers, my sisters, Ramadan, round the corner. We said, seek the forgiveness of Allah. Make some plan for the month of Ramadan. What would you like to do? Check the lessons. Do something. Use the time 
to benefit yourself, to come closer to Allah. Kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala alladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattakoon ayyaman ma'dudat. For a limited number of days, Allah says, we want you to achieve taqwa. Therefore, we have made compulsory the fast. Because we want you to achieve the consciousness of Allah, to improve your relationship with Allah. When you exit the month of Ramadan, you must be a better person. And I can tell you, one year will be your last Ramadan. Do you know which year that's going to be? Anyone know? No one knows. One year. Maybe last year was already your final Ramadan. Who knows? I might not see Ramadan. I might not. You may not. Who knows? How many people you ask about them? It's happened to me. How's that brother? Say, he passed away. He said, when? He passed away six months ago. You don't know? No. Rahmatullahi alayhi. Before you know it, your name will fly around in the same way. And so will mine. I'm not depressed about it, but I'm just hopeful in the mercy of Allah. Because I have no option. But at the same time, I lead my life. Where I faltered, I seek forgiveness. And where I am accepted by Allah to do good, I don't become arrogant. I thank Allah, but still greet the people, talk to them. You know, mashallah, spend a bit of time with the people. Serve the people, especially those who are underprivileged. The Prophet wasallam has told us to serve those who have, struck, who have been struck with calamity, disaster. Those who don't have the homeless, the orphans, perhaps the widows, whoever else it may be, the poor, the wayfarer, the one on the streets. You see a person on the streets, homeless. A lot of the times people look at them and don't even acknowledge that's a human. Have you ever bothered to greet a homeless person? Do you know they will look forward to seeing you every single day simply because you made them feel like a human? Do you know that? You see a homeless person, you just smile at them and keep going, even if it's not a proper greeting as such. But you made a difference. You see? No matter who you are, you could be a CEO of a company. What's the big deal? In Allah's eyes, will you come on the day of Qiyamah and say, I was the CEO of that company. We had a portfolio of uh, worth more than 30 million. You know, that's irrelevant to Allah. Nothing, zero. That was your dunya. That was your worldly life. It had nothing to do with the hereafter unless you converted it into good deeds. Because on that day, what will benefit you? Your deeds. You can't come to Allah and say, I was a tall basketball player. I was really good at it, man. If you use that in order to earn the pleasure of Allah, no problem. It's not haram. I mean, it's okay. You can be a sports person. You can be anyone else. You can be doing so many things, but do not do that compromising your relationship with Allah. May Allah Almighty grant us ease and goodness. I am looking forward to a brilliant Ramadan. I'm looking forward to a Ramadan where I can change my own life to do more than what I'm doing right now. May Allah help us all to do more. Do you know one of the biggest diseases that we have? We overlook those whom Allah has chosen without a say from us to be close to us in relation. Look at the Quran. Allah Almighty clearly speaks of the will qurba so many times. Allah says, give your relatives their due. And give the masakin, the poor people, their due. And give Ibn Sabil. Ibn Sabil means a son of the, of, of the road, of the path. The wayfarer. Those who are downtrodden, give them their due. It starts off with your relatives. Who are your relatives? Your parents, your children, your siblings, and then your spouse. Subhanallah. Be kind to them. That's the least you could do. Charitable. I've been going on and on and on, reminding people that charity actually begins at home. Be kind to one another. When I say your spouse, 
The wife needs to be kind to the husband. The husband needs to be kind and respectful to the wife as well. And we, we should have a beautiful relationship. We're not going to be the same. We're never the same. No two people have the same fingerprint or the iris. You know that. How do you think we're going to think exactly the same? You're born same mother, same father. But your world's apart. Part of your test is will you get along on common grounds? We have to. May Allah make it the best Ramadan. Amen. Inshallah, we fulfill salah and we encourage the imams as well to read in the most beautiful way so that we can enjoy the act of worship. I'm standing and I really feel this is an act of worship. Not like I'm on edge and I'm moving and I'm, I want to get down and get up and go down again and get up again. You're not in a gym, my brother. <laughs> Honestly, it's not a gym. You don't need to, oh, whoa, whoa, how many reps have you done? Today we did 35 reps. Come on. Your Samsung watches or whatever Apple watches that you have that track the movement of your heart and so on at the end of the taraweeh and whatnot, it might even give you how much you've lost in terms of calories and so on. And you're excited? No, come on, relax. Hey, today we were... We went for it. No, this is an act of worship. You should be calm. Your heart should be at ease. True believers attain the calmness of the heart through the remembrance of Allah. The best remembrance of Allah is the Quran. But the other adhkar that you have, the praise of Allah as well. Because indeed it is only the remembrance of Allah that will calm your heart. In the true sense. So we look forward to this month. We will reach out to people. We will try our best. We will be charitable. Try to give a charity on a daily basis. Try to ensure that you put a little bit, no matter what level you're on. We have so many aid organizations around us. Today, there was an announcement that Abdullah Aid was responsible to a great degree to make this happen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them. So aid organizations, it's good for us to put a pound, put 50p. Get the little children accustomed to it. Give them 20p and say, you know what? This thing, put it in the tin from you. So that as they grow older, they develop a culture of giving. We have the Ramadan challenge. You might have heard of it where I've got it as well. If you go to muftimenk.com, for example, you find a Ramadan challenge. You can subscribe to it. What it will do every day as you're sleeping, your charity is gone. One pound, perhaps 50p, whatever the minimum is. But the maximum is up to you. The idea is to be able to do something good every day. I want to give a charity every day. I want to do salah every day. I want to do Quran every day. I want to do this good deed every day. I want to help every day, etc., etc. So by the time the 30 days are done or 29, you're a transformed person, transformed human being. And every day we seek the forgiveness of Allah. And towards the end, you start feeling the mercy of Allah. You know, Ramadan is amazing because the beginning of it, mashallah, the excitement of the first day, second day, third day, and then it starts dwindling a little bit here and there because people start easing into Ramadan, right? And then you have just at the right time, the middle of Ramadan comes in and then you start taking things a little bit more seriously. Hey, it's two weeks up already. We're already on the downside, you know? And mashallah, before you know it, it's 20. 20, everything comes to light. And mashallah, 21, the masjid start packing up again. 22, as we're ending, subhanallah. Why is it when I come to this masjid, I always give examples of football? I see a lot of the youngsters, you look like fit guys, mashallah. Allah bless you guys. Towards the end of the match, is all the excitement. Everyone's, wow, 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 wow. There's loud noise, everything's happening and people are watching and so on. Some people say, I don't even like to watch football besides the last 10 minutes. Then I know what's going on, you know? Because we're on edge. People get serious. They come in. They want to do a lot in Ramadan. The last 10 days, we should do it from the beginning. Steady, mashallah. But the end of the race is what's important. If you exit Ramadan with the forgiveness of Allah and with a better connection with Allah, that was a successful month of Ramadan. 
May Allah grant us goodness. May Allah bless everyone. And may Allah Almighty open our doors, help us in our homes. May Allah help us in our sustenance, those who don't have jobs. May Allah provide for you sustenance in a manner you'd never imagined. Those who are struggling with anxiety, may Allah calm you and soothe you. And may Allah grant you the reassurance. And those who are struggling with any health matters, may Allah give you cure and shifa. Those who've lost loved ones, may Allah grant them Jannatul Firdaus and may Allah gather all of us in the hereafter in a good condition in the companionship of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Those of you who are struggling in any way and those struggling across the globe in whatever way they may be struggling our hearts and prayers reach out to them Oh Allah help them grant them those who don't have homes the homeless may Allah provide for them shelter those who don't have food when we're sitting with so much, may Allah grant them the morsels of food or the food that they need. Those who don't have clothing, may Allah grant them clothing. Brothers and sisters, we have a lot to do. Allah has given us more than we need. Take from that which is over and above your need. Reach out to others. Your life will change. May Allah help us all. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka. Ala nabina Muhammad wa alaykum wa rahmatullah.